relationship to Pope Boniface? I wonder. I don't, um, I don't think so. No, you don't think so. You don't want to think so. All right. Um, the title of this talk is Next Generation Forensics Composite of Uruguay. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for being here. It's a great pleasure for me to be presenting the results of our investigation. I am a part of a team who has been working on the Flora Project for Uruguay, and today I'm going to present the result for the Composite family. So I would like to start uh, presenting a brief introduction uh, on the importance of flora, although some of that was already mentioned uh, during the previous talks. Then I'm going to talk a little bit on the methods to be used to approach the flora of our country. And then I'm going to give you some details on the composite of uh, Uruguay. So uh, we know that floras are important because they help us to understand basic questions like how many species are there, where do they grow, when do they set fruit and, uh, and seeds and all that. Uh, but somehow, that thing that we all agree doesn't permeate to the uh, people that uh, grant and uh, offer grants uh, to the you know, uh, universities, uh, you know, uh, committees that evaluate uh, faculty performance. So sometimes it, we are at odds between something that we know is important but is not in general valued by uh, our system. At least, I don't know exactly what the situation here, but at least in Latin America, that's how it goes. So. Uh, so this, in this analogy, in this uh, figure here, taking a, a, a slightly modified from the work of Freud, you see the evolution of flores, marked by two major, uh, you know, uh, milestones like the introduction of the binomial nomenclature uh, by Linnaeus, uh, and then the work of Candolle for the flora of France, uh, introducing for the first time detailed, very analytical uh, descriptions. And I added there that uh, thanks to the advent of the, uh, the internet in the 1990s. We are now in what it's, I, I call uh, next generation floristic because of the way we could interact with the data. Not only we get the data on what plants are there and where, where, where are they, they, but we now are able to analyze that data in a many, many different ways and ask other many important uh, questions. So uh, Flora's had a sense of uh, 18 or even 19th century uh, science and sometimes that's why they are kind of underappreciated. Of course, we have the DNA revolution, who offer uh, the 20th century, who offer a coral copy of possibility to further understand the plant world. But that has led to this problem in which, you know, uh, working on a floor has that 19th century feeling. It takes a lot of time, so it doesn't fit in the current scheme of students needing to graduate in a very short amount of time. Uh, so with all of that scenario, to, to propose myself to start working on a flora, it's a very challenging uh, issue. So uh, now that I've dealt with that issue of the importance of flora, why we need to try to convince the rest of the people about the importance of them, I want to talk a little bit about uh, my country, Uruguay. Uh, Uruguay. Uruguay is a easily overlooked country, very small between mega diverse Brazil and very well known uh, Argentina, but. We are in a rather interesting place, a sort of cro biogeographic crossroads between hot and humid uh, habitats to the north and dry and cold habitats to the south. So that means that in that place, which is one of the uh, largest spots of grassland in South America, uh, a lot of the species distributions meet. So it's a very interesting place to work with plants. And uh, if you look at the geology of the country, it's very diverse for such a small place. We have all different sorts of rocks and expanding through an age range from up to uh, 2,500 million years. So that has led to a very diverse system of soils. So even when we don't have major uh, you know, geographic accident, we still have some diverse habitat that accounts for the diversity that we have in the place. Still, as I mentioned before, most of the vegetation consists of grasslands. So, uh, most of, most of the country is still in a very pristine shape, except for the south, which is more uh, modified. Uh, we have a very you know, interesting uh, biota associated with those grasslands. We also have, I don't know what happened there, um, we also have some sort of forest associated with, uh, with, with some uh, very extensive hill range. Forests, for the most part, associated with uh, rivers and streams. We also have some uh, penetration in Uruguay of the Chaco vegetation, to sort of sort of a dry forest. Uh, but we are facing some challenges in rapidly changing the use of the land. 
the most one of the most important factors is the, uh, the, the tree plantations that are kind of destroying a lot of the habitat. We also have extensive agriculture and invasive species. So against all these odds, and with a country that we never had a complete pollution flora, is that we set ourselves to work on the composting. So the flora of Uruguay has uh, almost 3,000 species. Uh, more or less 90% uh, of the flora is native, with 12% of the flora are dentitious. And it is very unevenly distributed, with 5% of the family accounting for nearly 50% of the species. And if the composition here is very similar to what the earlier speakers talked about, the composition of the grasslands uh, composition. Uh, so we started this project of the flora having a crash course inviting uh, you know, leading uh, researchers in the field. And we had a course in which we taught a lot of students that eventually became collaborators in the project. And the, our approach from a methodological standpoint was to try to build a description from scratch, right? And uh, in a non-destructive way, in which, and what I mean by that, that for every specimen we will build a spreadsheet and we will record almost 100 characters with almost 300 states for that single specimen. And we will do, we will measure between five and ten specimens distributed along the whole distribution range for that particular species and uh, build a matrix just for each of those ten specimens. In that way, if along the project we change our idea of one of those specimens, we should be able to recreate later uh, by synthesis the descriptions that correctly reflect the diversity of the taxa. We also deal with the problem of uh, standardizing terminology, which is, I think is a very important problem because sometimes you just can't compare treatment because you don't know exactly what the perception of a given author is for a certain character, especially for traits like the pubescence, for instance. And to deal with that, something that we did was to build, just to be consistent among the different team members, we will a uh, dichotomy scheme that will help us to, uh, at least in a very objective and standard way, to figure out what sort of pubescence we have there. So, what are the composite in Uruguay? We have uh, 20 tribes present in the country, almost 130 genera, and 440 uh, species. Along this project, five undergraduate thesis were, were completed, two master science one. We are in the process of describing five new species, uh, nearly 50 new records, and, and a large number of uh, expanding the range of uh, distribution in, in, in many species. Uh, like almost like 90%, between 80 and 90% of the species are native, and uh, the rest is uh, introduced. If you look at the life forms, uh, you will see that most life forms, most compositing are of herbaceous nature with very, very few uh, percentage of uh, woody compositing. If you look at the habitat, most of the compositing are present in uh, the grasslands and uh, the reason why forest is so big is because we have that patch of uh, dry forest getting to the country and that open habitat is good for, for compositing there. So what are the main groups of compositing? Well the main group of compositing in this country are the tribe Asteri, which is one of, which is the largest tribe worldwide. Uh, here we have a genus that is more or less endemic to the Uruguay, Uruguayan area uh, region. But the largest genus, one, uh, I, I should have said, so uh, almost two species uh, out of 10 for the Uruguayan flora are compositing. So it's a place good to study compositing. And one out of 10 species of compositing is a baccarus. It's the largest genus in the country with almost 50 species. Uh, this is one species that is in the process of being described as new. Very, very common, the type, the, the section of baccarus that has winged stems there that are very useful. Uh, very frequently used as uh, medicinal plants. Another important tribe is the Yupa tribe with uh, Chromolaina being one of the largest genera. Uh, we have also the Sinicioni, that's very important, uh, very, very ubiquitous uh, in, the, in the country. And of course, you know that the compositing where the you know, researchers think that it was originated in the southern end of the continent. So uh, in Uruguay, we had a lot of the basal lineages represented among these in the Mutisi or in the Nassawi here with the Bilevian Corolla, it's very obvious. Uh, so it's a very interesting place because it's a, such a small country with this uh, very, very wide representation of the, of the family, see? So in terms of the endemic taxa, being such a small country, we couldn't expect a lot of endemics being there, but still we have 13 species restricted to the country. Uh, this is one of them, which is uh, named Grindelia orientalis. 
but if we take uh, you know a slightly larger area and consider Uruguay area, you know, extending a little bit into neighboring Brazil and Argentina, we could get that number of endemics considerably larger. And this is one of the basal lineages in the in the composite. It is belonging to the Barnardesi, and this is a grass a grass looking comb that is very, very interesting. And if you look at the distribution map, it will show it a slightly augmented map of, of Uruguay. Here you have the, the most updated um, classification of the composite, you know, with the basal lineages towards the left and then the more derived lineages towards the right with the, with the circle size more or less representative of the size of each group. And uh, if we look at what's happening in Uruguay, the gray circles are taxons that are not present there. You can see that there is, there's a fairly good representation of the phylogeny in the taxa present in the country, which is also, I mean, very interesting from the perspective of being in a small place and having access to a great diversity of uh, plant uh, types. So this is our format for the flora that we intend to have it in, in print. So it's a sort of a very aggregated way with short descriptions, dichotomous key, and instead of illustration, because a lot of money and time, we are using photographs. We are also building uh, electronic keys using the product software Wolsey, and we are going to use this, the platform Scratchpad developed by the uh, British Museum in order to have our results online. And uh, we are also encouraging the public in Uruguay, the general audience, to use um, the, the application iNaturalist as a way of helping us to uh, you know, get a new reports on, on species throughout the country. But all this, everything, it's, it's based on collections. And that is another of the things that are uh, you know, under stress everywhere. And I think we need not only to convince uh, the decision makers that flora are important to support all the wonderful research that has been broadcasted in this uh, meeting, but also to support the collections that make all that research possible. This is a recent effort in Uruguay to understand uh, you know, uh, what biota was associated to the grasslands, and I think that our project will contribute to this by means of providing all the data regarding the plants that occur in those grasslands. Yeah. A lot of those animals that you see there, uh, the native animals uh, from Uruguay in the grasslands, are uh, endangered species. So now we are trying also to uh, somehow uh, market uh, the importance of the flora in terms of providing information that vouch for you know uh, ecologically friendly uh, beef uh, that is one of the major exports of Uruguay. So um, that is one of the things that we think uh, might help us you know put the message that how, why floras are important because they will have a direct impact on the price that we could get by the beef we sell. Uh, and with that, I would like to thank uh, you know, the IAPT who made it possible for me to come here, uh, the, my university, and the Uruguayan Agency for Research and Innovation. And I will take any questions that you might have. Thank you.